morning. I would like to thank your pastor, all of y'all for being faithful on the Lord's day. I'd like to thank most of all God for his mercy and grace, for without it I wouldn't be standing here. My name is Jeffrey Cooper. I'm a part of the Mago Day. My wife, our four kids, and myself make up this ministry. My wife, Samantha, is the backbone of the ministry. When she first started out uh, in 2019, she was standing at the Bristol's Women Clinic on the Tennessee side, and all she had was a little red wagon and a sign that said free Bibles. And she, she didn't engage the mothers. She didn't talk to them unless she was talked to. Then the Lord started leading her to hold signs and, and uh, plead with the mothers that were going in to have compassion and mercy on their babies. Uh, in addition to uh, being at on the sidewalk in 2020, we became a nonprofit and expanded our outreach to include various social media outlets. Uh, since the start of our outreach, God has saved over 200 babies. The Lord has allowed, in some cases, for us to provide financial support for these mothers. About a, a little over a month ago, Samantha was out at the abortion clinic in Bristol, Virginia, where through an interpreter, uh, she was able to speak to a mother who chose life for her child. The mother decided that day to leave and not keep her an appointment. Uh, along with other churches and Christians, we are trying to help this mother financially and spiritually. Uh, she she needs a lot. We ask for prayers for this young mother with her various needs and obstacles that she's facing. You ask me what makes the Imago Day any different than any other pro-life or organization. I would have to say there's a lot of differences. Primarily, we are gospel-centered. We call ourselves abolitionists. Now you may say, or are wondering, what's an abolitionist? Abolitionists believe in the total and immediate abolishment of abortion, contrary to the pro-life movement. Abolitionists, uh, we believe in equal protection and equal justice. When we say we believe in equal protection and equal justice, we are saying that the unborn child in the womb deserves the same protection and the same justice as any other human being deserves. The pro-life movement, who fights for incremental steps, they fight for bills that, uh, for example, are heartbeat bills, no pain bills, and six-week bans. The pro-life movement also uh, fights against bills of total abolishment of abortion because of their stance on equal justice. They believe and hold to that the mother is the second victim, essentially robbing the mother uh, of the true gospel of Jesus Christ, that she is a victim, and since she is a victim, she doesn't need to repent. Uh, the pro-life movement has successfully killed all bills in various states that would have abolished abortion, providing equal justice and equal protection for all human beings. You heard me say earlier that we are gospel-centered, and that is true of the abolitionist movement. However, in pro-life, they are mostly made up of secular organizations, the Catholic Church, and many professing Christians. Please don't get me wrong. I do believe there are Christians in the pro-life movement that stand on the word of God and who would not compromise on these uh, ish, biblical issues. 
Why is all this important? Because as a church, we have allowed the pro-life movement in 51 years to dictate how the church handles abortion by using incremental steps, blatant disregard of God's word, all the while over 70 million preborn children have been led to the slaughter. And this does not equate for the murder through IVF. With, with the overturning of Roe and now the Dobbs decisions, we have not only failed to abolish abortion in any state, but we have also seen an increase in abortion by travel to Safe Haven Street State, excuse me, or by online methods and deliver the delivery of abortion pills straight to the mother's door in banned states or not. These numbers are atrocious, astronomical, astronomical, and sadly, there's another industry that you could say far surpasses this that are, is rarely talked about, and you might be shocked even here. This is the IV, IVF industry. The IVF industry among Christian evangelicals is uh, often tolerated, accepted, uh, because of the nature surrounding it. The vast majority being couples who long for a child and are having some sort of fertility issues. We can sympathize with these couples, but we must stand fast in God's word and that God is the one who opens and shuts the womb, his purpose and for his glory. The sad reality is that IVF is just as wicked and evil as abortion industry. The IVF, in IVF, an estimated 120 million and freezing around uh, 6 million from the start of the years uh, 1978 to 2018 who now, who knows how many accidentally have been destroyed or have been experimented on through scientific research. As you can see, our ministry covers a wide gamut of issues, issues that literally mean is a matter of life and death. We have gone from a society of people that says, said that it's just a clump of cells to a society of people that it says that we know it is a human being and we're going, going to kill it anyway. Standing outside abortion clinics and, on, and doing online ministry, we know we are dealing with the lost. We know that we can't change hearts, that it's only God that can take a stony heart and turn it into a flesh heart that it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that is power unto salvation to save lives. In closing, I would like to say that it's not just standing outside abortion clinics. We have to do something to stand up against this Holocaust, this travesty of injustice that is being perpetrated on our fellow image bearers of God I would like to encourage you to get involved. We desire and cover your prayers. We are struggling outside at the abortion clinic, the mill, as for an online present or on-site present, and we need volunteers. Last we, lastly, we are a, a ministry, and with a ministry comes financial and expenses. We need financial supporters to help with this burden as well. I'd also encourage you to uh, look into abolitionism, the pro-life movement, and the wrongs that are being committed through IVF. Uh, do you have anything, Sam? At this time, I'd like to introduce my wife. 
she has a few things. We don't think you are usurping the authority I'm so uh, short. by standing up there. Okay, so he brought up IVF a lot. Um, and the reason why is the Lord's really leading me not only to be a sidewalk presence at the abortion clinic, but I've been doing a lot of research on IVF. I'm in a lot of IVF groups right now. And it is just insane the amount of babies who are being created and killed because of gender, because of they have Down syndrome or what have you. They're literally making designer babies. And it is scary how many children are being created in test tubes for people who biologically cannot have children because they are in a homosexual relationship. So now we have that going on too where you have two women going to a clinic using somebody else another man's sperm in order to utilize their egg and that's how we're creating babies um, and that also goes into surrogacy we had a mom last year who was a surrogate mother for two homosexual guys and at 34 weeks they wanted her to have an abortion because the baby the little boy was too small we had him from china also didn't we? And then there's some from China that do that as well. But she was she had an appointment scheduled in Washington D.C. at 34 weeks for an elective abortion, all because the attended parents thought the baby was too small. And we ended up reaching out to her, offering a lawyer. We reached out to her pastor um, because she wasn't willing to cooperate with us. And it, Lord, bless the Lord that the baby was not murdered. But to tell you what would have happened to that child, she would have went to Washington, D.C., and they would have gave the baby a shot in the heart, and he would have went into cardiac arrest. Because she wanted to deliver the baby and not have the baby dismembered, she was going to go back to Virginia to be induced so she could get a death certificate. Had she not have done that, it would have been a three-day process. They would have gave him the shot for cardiac arrest, then they would have dilated her and then they would have ripped piece by piece and this happens every day in Washington DC Washington Colorado New Mexico and there's another one where pretty much up until birth you can murder your child and that is how they do it so that is what we're fighting against online and while our online presence outreach has been hindered by certain obstacles we are still sharing screenshots of what these moms are saying because they know it is a child and sometimes they just do not care. We have one the other day that was posting that because the child's father left her and because she didn't want to do it alone, she's gonna have an abortion. So that's, and they're getting them paid for, fully funded by the pro-choice movement. They're the paying for their expenses. airfare. They're flying them, putting them up in hotels, lodging, rental cars, everything. You're talking about two, $3,000 procedures. And then the abortion pills, I can order the abortion pill right now in the state of Tennessee for free and have it delivered to me in three days if I wanted it. And the abortion pill, it's not only effective until 10 or 11 weeks. You can theoretically take the abortion pill up until the third trimester and it work. If you look in the news articles like the mother and the daughter who were the, the Facebook thing, I think it was in Nebraska or something like that, they were, it was big in the news. She was like 28 weeks pregnant. She got the, the abortion pills from Aid Access. She was 28 weeks pregnant, took those, and had the baby, and, and the baby died, and they just buried the baby or did what they did. But that's just to show you, you don't need more because you're f further along. It works just about just as well. The percentage of success rate is lower. But that's about. And we have a conference coming up next Saturday. If y'all can come to Athens. Um, don't know how far away that is my sense of direction is really bad two and a half hours something like that but we'll be there from two to seven and we've been helping with uh, getting this all together with their pasture and stuff but it's going to be really fun did you did i say anything? Uh, i did speak about the mother didn't I? yeah that's awesome <laughs> i think that's all i had to hey, do you want to maybe tell what kind of the average week looks like at the uh, she as was far just as, as far as people out there you know, supporting you guys and partnering with you you know Lock and Crystal they're, they're out there some you guys are out there and then various churches 
What's, what's Deborah's last name? I'm drawing a blank. Um, we have a small group of Christians that come out there. Friday is our big day that most most of the Christians will go Friday morning, and they make up a variety of a majority of Presbyterian churches and a couple uh, Baptist churches that come there on Friday. Um, throughout the week, uh, myself and uh, Deb, we try and cover the days that aren't being covered. Um, there is probably, on average, one, two, three, four, five, five to seven faithful Christians that come out various days of the week, majority of it being on a Friday. Um, there used to be only morning appointments, and now they have went from having morning to afternoon appointments. And seven days a week. And now seven days a week. They're there today. They were, they were there today, and there was five or six moms that came. Um, this week alone, there's been 59 that were slaughtered. Um, we're at, just for the month of January, uh, 222 or 26 for the month. Um, yesterday, there was 18. So we try and pick up days that other people don't. We're out two days a week. I like to go out three. Um, my prayer is to be a full-time missionary to the pre-born. Um, if we can get the funding, because if I'm out there all the time, he can't work. We have bills to pay and things like that. I would like to be out there full-time for the morning and the afternoon appointments. Um, I'm comfortable being out there by myself. The Lord has given me strength, and which is really weird because I'm not a very big people person. But he equips those he wants to equip and he qualifies those he wants to qualify. And I'm one of the least qualified you'd probably think of. But I'm comfortable being out there by myself. Um, we both talked about it. And if anything were to happen to me, we understand that's a risk that we're willing to take. We know that's a possibility. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it just to be out there to share the gospel. Because you're not just out there because the babies are being led to slaughter. It's not just about the babies. It's the souls of these mothers and fathers and grandparents and social workers and everybody else who comes out there to lead these babies to slaughter with them. Their souls are at risk and they're on the verge of eternity in hell. So you have so much going on out there and it is very dark and demonic and exhausting but the Lord gives us strength. There's so. a spirit behind it. There is, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, it was Moloch. They were passing the seed through the fire unto Moloch. And that's what we see. Speaking of the funding, what, what does it cost a month to keep you guys out there? I mean, not your personal, I'm just saying, you know, because you gotta be, there's gotta be heat. There has to be something else that goes into this besides the fuel, and what's the funding to keep you guys keep you guys out there a month? We were, I was figuring up, and if he could work part time, we were saying, because we're so bare minimum, like we're not, we don't have a whole lot of luxuries. Um, it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, fifteen hundred, we were thinking, if we had like, which we're working, we're we're trying to get more support, like fifteen hundred, we get the gas and stuff. Like right now, one of the things I'm wanting to do is where we're back in the right of way is I need to get another sign made for a specific purpose that I cannot say right now. But Signs and conferences, you know, getting the word out. Educating people. Uh, if you're just talking about going back and forth to the mill or being out at the mill, it, you know, it, it's gas, you know. $15 a day. You know, it's nothing. But, uh, you know, it... But I mean, $15 a day times 30 days a yeah. And see, sometimes I'm able to go before church too. Um, so I'm able to go on some Sundays, depending how nasty it is. I'll go and I'll leave in time to make church while he gets the kids around. Um, but then there's also conferences. So we went to G3, and G3 was one of the most expensive conferences we went to. We had three different churches that put in for us to go. Me, myself, I probably would not have done that with ministry money, but since the churches wanted that directly to go there, we did. And I'm thankful that we did, only because we brought the whiteboard with the questions, and we had several people change their mind on if a mother is actually a victim or not, or should she be criminalized. And we had a few change their mind on IVF. So that's another thing we want to do, is we're wanting to get away from abortion conferences and more towards your solid biblical Christian conferences to engage and educate them because we met a lot of people who didn't even know what IVF was. Yeah. 
who were in their 20s and 30s. And I honestly didn't know any, hardly any about it until I started doing research and started looking into it myself. So that's a lot of it is education, being out there, and trying to equip Christians to go to their pasture to, like, hey, what can we do? Just, it's a little bit of work. Just a little. Hey. So, so the clinic in first is around roughly 50, 60 hours a week, something along the way of the Eight to five, um, Monday through Friday. Um, eight to 12, Saturday and Sunday. So it's about 50 hours. And then there's a break. We know when the breaks are, though. Like, they do morning appointments, and they all take their pills at one time. Then there's a couple hour break, and then there's afternoon appointments, and they all take their pills at one time, except for on surgical days. Those days are a lot longer. So this church right here is roughly an hour from the clinic in Bristol. How many Bible believing churches do you think are within a one hour radius of that clinic? Thousands? Within yes. a five mile radius of that church, just I use the SBC because the SBC has the largest uh, church search you can look for. And I want to say within 5 or 10 miles, there's 500 churches. Within 50 miles, there's over 1,000 churches. So of just got SBC. Thousands of churches. And, you know, if one member from each church gave like an hour you, standing alongside you guys each you month, cover the you would cover it. I mean, it would be a huge presence of You'd be elbow. Yes, it would. I'm pretty sure nobody from our team even lives in Bristol. Um, no, nobody's from Bristol, which is sad. Like, nobody from Bristol comes and stands at the Bristol, Virginia kill mill that's right outside of a neighborhood, which is actually 7.3 miles away from the church. And we're all from Tennessee, aren't we? Yeah, you know, no, we're not all from Tennessee. We're not. Um, the guy who owns the Bristol, Virginia kill mill is a Christian who has leased it out to them and their church is a little over seven miles um, away. We actually need to ask prayer for that because we are in conversation right now with their associate pastor um, to try and see what we can get done with the owner coming to repentance and seeing if we can get this clinic closed. Um, last year over 2,200 babies were murdered because he allowed baby killers in his building and he's a professing Christian, it just blows my mind. It's sad. And let everybody know roughly where that clinic is located. 2603 Osborne Street, Bristol, Virginia. In front of the casino. Yeah, right across from the, the Bristol Casino. Next door to Lee Bank. Like a half mile from Tennessee, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, it's sad. Not too far from the, the old clinic, three miles or something. 1.2 miles away from the clinic on, on Slaughter Street. That's how far they moved. So it was a hop, skip, and a jump. We good? <laughs> I'll have anything else. We thank you for listening to us.